whether it's the same grungy old thing that you've had an absolute ton of mileage out of, or a brand spanker that you just picked up and can't wait to try. It's generally agreed amongst pretty much everyone who's adopted a wet palette in their painting that they wouldn't be without one since doing so. Some of these palettes hold cost as a fairly minimal concern and bring you posh hard plastic casings, snazzy looking components and lots of accessories. Others try to strike a balance between quality and price, bringing something fairly premium with a little less hefty of a price tag. And further still, some folks prefer to extol the virtues of the humble homemade wet palette. Cheap, cheerful, and easy to put together yourself. But coming from a traditional painting background, I've been using a wet palette for many years now, and so I've had a lot of time to experiment and come up with something of my own that I think strikes all the right balances of performance, cost, and minimizing hassle. And it's actually super simple and convenient to copy this setup yourself. So let's talk about what I use and why I use it. For me, the layer that matters the most in a wet palette is the sponge. I need to be able to trust that I can make it through a full session, close the palette for the night, come back the next day and be greeted by a palette that's still which is where we meet two products, uh, sponge, I think, or sponge. They're essentially the same thing. In fact, I feel like they're literally the same thing, just maybe with two different brands. It's a cellulose cloth available from Amazon, link below of course, as will be the rest of the stuff that I mentioned today. It's a cheap and extremely capable product for the job that we require from a wet palette sponge. This thing will stay wet longer than I do when the LGS announces a half price paint sale. It also lasts longer than the exact opposite of me when the LGS announces a half price paint sale. And then there's the paper. You'll often be told that a roll of your mum's finest baking paper is all you ever need for a wet palette, and to be honest, it'll do. But it's wildly inconsistent in how it performs from brand to brand. And if you're anything like me, we see a change. So meet the Atelier or Frisk Stay Wet Palette Refill Packs. Again, two products that are from Amazon. Probably the same product with two different brands. You see this a lot on Amazon. And again, very cheap. Uh, a bit less than a fiver for, I think it's eight, maybe 10 sheets in a pack. They might not actually seem super cheap, but one of these lasts me a week and I paint every single day for five to eight hours a day. You're probably gonna be getting I reckon three months out of a pack would be my guess. So probably not the cheapest, but definitely cheap enough. And more importantly, this stuff performs. It doesn't bobble up when you mix on it. It doesn't underhydrate your paints, defeating the object of having a wet palette in the first place. It just does what you want it to and doesn't complain. You've already seen this in the video a few times by now, but you're probably wondering what this massive plastic case is for the palette. And again, you guessed it, it's one of two products from Amazon that are probably the same product. Meet the Atelier and Frisk Keep Wet Palettes. About 12 or 13 pounds on Amazon in the UK, but I believe you can get them worldwide. You know how Amazon prices love to fluctuate though, just enough to make YouTubers look stupid when they quote them, so I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it costs. There's really only three things that I want in a palette case. I want it to be shallow so I don't have to reach down too far to get my paints. I want it to be reasonably airtight so that it holds a soggy atmosphere. And I want it to be massive because I'm greedy and I paint a lot. This palette does all of these things. But as a bonus, we also use the same membrane sheets that come with it too, meaning that we get a lovely two for one on the pack of included sheets that are with it. They do include a few bits of blotting paper as well, which they claim are the bottom sponge layer for this palette. I don't think we want those. They're pretty awful. You can't even make a decent paper plane out of them. Assembling your Franken palette is as simple as can be. We just first snip the sponge down a little to get it to size, and then we wanna get that sponge absolutely sopping wet under a tap. I mean, really make sure it's full of water. We next want to insert the sponge into our palette case. I like to double it up, but feel free to experiment here before then topping off with some more water until the water level is about even with the top of the sponge. Next, we're gonna grab a sheet of the membrane paper and lay it evenly on the surface of the sponge. 
Now it's gonna curl in some direction or another, seemingly at random. The main thing is to wait until it's stopped moving of its own accord before adjusting it to get a nice fit with no wrinkles or bubbles if you can help it. And then it's ready to use and paint away to your heart's content, comfortable in the knowledge that your paint will stay wet for your whole painting session and any paint you haven't used will be preserved overnight with the lid on. It's also worth noting on that point that if it's warm where you are, and it's very warm where I am at the moment, you can get a bit of sweaty palette overnight and leaving the lid open a crack can prevent condensation coming back down into your paint. This isn't a tip specifically for this palette. This is just a tip for wet palettes in general that's been very useful to me. And so there you have it, my perfect wet palette. Might not end up being yours, but worth a try, I think, because it is cheap. It's very easy to get the bits due to using Amazon as the source, which means they're all available generally next day for most people. And for my tastes, it is probably the best performance I've found in a palette. It certainly outperforms the more expensive palettes. It easily outperforms the cheaper palettes, in my opinion. And I think it's worth a go. So if you enjoyed this video or found the tips useful, please do consider giving it a like or maybe even subscribing to the channel. We're eking ever closer to my goal for the year of hitting 10k subs and it would mean a hell of a lot to me if we could get there before the end of the year. You can also, if you really love what we're doing here on the channel, join our amazing community discord and get other great benefits by joining my Patreon campaign. Links to this and all the materials that we used in the video today are all in the description below. So thank you so much for watching folks. I will see you in the next one and bye bye for now.